He celebrated his 100th birthday. You'd all help me welcome Brigadier General Charles Meade. Thank you. I don't know whether a question was planted or not, but if you have one, after I say a few words, I'll be glad to entertain it. How many of you know who the Tuskegee Airmen are? <laughs> Some hands went up, but. Um, well, let me say a few words about it so that, that uh, as you pass on the word, you pass it on correctly. There are actually what I call five phases to the Tuskegee experience. And why the Tuskegee experience? Well, in 1925, an Army War College group did a study and the subject was use of Negro manpower if America gets involved in another war. It's a four-page report, but paragraph three on the first page said the American Negro is physically qualified. The American Negro does not have the intelligence of the American white man. The American Negro does not have the emotional capability of the white man, etc., etc., etc. As a second class citizen, we could dig ditches, build roads, cook food, but fly an airplane, maintain an airplane, impossible. They sent this report to Washington to be a part of mobilization manpower if America ever got involved in the war again. And Washington bought it. So our country, 1939, coming out of 10 years of depression, declared war to support our allies in Europe. That declaration didn't change segregation, but it did provide opportunity, enlistments, war buildup, jobs. The country did come together even though segregation continued. But no blacks were allowed in aviation. Well, that didn't slow down the war and the needs. There was pressure for inclusion. The Army said, well, we've studied the issue. We know it would be a failure. Uh, we keep, okay, well, we'll authorize a squadron. We know it won't be successful. But what was the squadron at that time? The squadron was 34 pilots, 24 aircraft, and because of segregation, all of the necessary support. Well, that's a couple hundred technicians of all of the skills required to fly. But that didn't end it because they still needed medical, administration, supply, other skills. That's another couple hundred. And uh, we'll call it the 99th Pursuit Squadron. The Army policy at the time was, you know, they had a civilian pilot training program uh, at colleges around the country to provide a pool of pilots for the military to call on as they built up their resources. In fact, I believe it was here in Washington, D.C., pilot got his wings in the civilian pilot training program, went next door, said, I'd like to be an Army pilot. They said, oh, we can't use a black pilot because we don't have any black mechanics. Well, of the now called Tuskegee Airmen, the very first were the mechanics. 
trained at Chanoonfield Grand Tool Illinois Technical School, expected to fail, and they didn't. And our men said, oh my gosh, we need an airfield for the pilot training. Airfields all around the country, but they found four million dollars to build Tuskegee Army Airfield. I learned of the flying program because of those mechanics in training. I was at the University of Illinois just 14 miles away, and we were certainly aware that there were blacks in training up at Chinook Field and learned why. Well, that first class of the 99th began their flight training in 1941. The unit was combat ready by December of 1942, flying the P-40 aircraft. No white commander wanted a black unit. They continued in training another three months and were finally sent to North Africa, attached to white group with segregation went overseas. Pilots of the 99 sent the man over to the location of the group, got their mission, came back and flew. But Colonel Momire didn't want them, and a few months later he said, I told you they weren't aggressive. They've only shot down one aircraft. Ought to be patrolling Liberia. How's your remembrance in school. Where was Liberia in Africa? Where were the Germans in Africa? Well, I think you get the, <laughs> the idea. But that brought a hearing in Washington, and now that that hearing, um, the results showed that their bombs on target was equal to others, older than in combat a short time, still the need to stay in combat. They moved out of Sicily, out of North Africa and Sicily, out of Sicily is the Italy. Well, training continued at Tuskegee Army Airfield, more than just replacement pilots for the 99th, three additional single-engine fighter squadrons, the 100th, the 301st, and 302nd. So the 332nd fighter group is the second phase of the Tuskegee experience. We were, I was in the 302nd squadron of that group. Um, we were, at that time, Tuskegee Army Airfield too crowded. We did our combat training up in Michigan. And we could up further north in Michigan, do gunnery out over the lake without disturbing the, the traffic on the lake. The 332nd Fire Group was combat ready in the P-40. I graduated in June of 43 and uh, assigned to the 302nd. They say by December we're combat ready, but they said, oh, you are going to do some patrol work. We switched to the P 39 Bel Air Cobra before leaving the States. And at the time the 99th was moving out of Sicily into Italy, 332nd Fighter Group landed directly in Italy. We patrolled Naples Harbor and waterways up to the Angel Beach. You know, and I'd like to say in looking at history, there was one little bit of integration because the 99th was assigned to the 79th fighter group and Bill Bates was just glad to have more aircraft and pilots and over the Anzio Beachhead in the few days' time, the 99 shot down more than a dozen German aircraft, so it was a matter of opportunity. But that didn't last, the Army didn't change the policy. But in the spring of 44, uh, four groups were picked from 12th Tactical Air Force to uh, move to 15th Strategic Air Force to protect our bombers. We thought we had enough guns on our B-17s and B-24s to protect them against the German Air Force. That wasn't happening. Sometimes, I think the bombers, of course, we, we put up 16 aircraft, bombers put up you probably 12. But 
some of their and some of their efforts to destroy Germany's war making potential, half of the squadron didn't come back. Well, six aircraft, 10 American lives, that's 60 lives lost. So they needed escort protection. And the 332nd Fighter Group was one of four picked to begin that escort work, um, leaving the Naples area of, of Italy moving to the Adriatic side. The bombers now out of North Africa are in southern Italy and that made it nice for us to join up with us. But our assignment was protection to protect the American lives. That we did under the wonderful leadership of Ben Davis Jr who when he graduated from West Point in 1936 and said I wanted to fly, was told him we have no black units. He went through the first class and became the commander. And I think those of you who like history must realize that he went through four years of West Point with what we may call silent treatment. He wouldn't talk to, he had no room to eat. He was only spoken to when officially required, but he stuck it out. His mandate to we young, rash second and first lieutenant says, as I called it at the time, was our task is to protect American lives. And if I find anybody going happy hunting, he's going to be court-martialed. How many of you know what happy hunting means? Well, happy hunting means that uh, you hear that there are German aircraft in the air and you leave your bombers to go find them. Well, that was a job because once you went off, somebody out of the sun or somewhere else came in and did the task that you were there to not let happen. Um, so that kind of stuck. Now, you know, we're often called the Red Tails. Folks, 332nd Fire Group is on the second phase of the Tuskegee experience. And when I get to the third phase, they weren't Red Tails. So I want you to understand that, that what we're talking about when you see the movie Red Tails, or talk about Tuskegee only as Red Tail. I'm a Red Tail, but that's not, that's just half of the organization. Well, anyway, that turned out to be successful. When I graduated in June of 43, the white instructor that I had said, too bad they don't have a bomber program for you guys because I think you'd make a good bomber pilot. I didn't ask him what he meant. <laughs> <laughs> I just enjoyed flying. Uh, but he didn't know, nor did I have time, that they had already approved, and three months later, medium bomber training began at Tuskegee Army Airfield. So the third phase of the Tuskegee experience, 477 bomb group medium flying the Mitchell B-25 again, four squadrons again, all of the necessary people because the Army still wanted to hold on to the segregation. They did not want a white airman saluting a black officer. So, 477 bond groups in training. Um, the war ends, 332nd fighter group comes back home. Um, in the bomber training, it turns out, when they're training bases, the commander had General Hunter, this is Colonel Selway, and General Hunter's okay to say that on his base, trainees can only use the facilities he designated. What did he mean?